Save Our Seminary at Forest Glen, Seminary Stories, Staff and Students. Hi, this is Ann Brockett with Save Our Seminary, and I welcome you to another installment of Seminary Stories. This time, our subject is the Presidents of National Park Seminary, a school for young women in Forest Glen, Maryland. The school operated from 1894 to 1942 and has become a residential community rich in history, which SOS is pleased to share. The husband and wife team of John and Vesta Cassidy founded National Park Seminary in 1894 with John as president and Vesta as principal. The Cassidys had met at Ohio Wesleyan University and worked together as educators at the LaSalle Seminary for Young Women in Auburndale, Massachusetts, and the Norfolk College for Young Ladies in Virginia, before searching out a location to establish their own educational institution. They found the perfect location in a shuttered hotel in Forest Glen, Maryland, seen here in the background. The former Ye Forest Inn lent itself to conversion to a school use with its full service kitchen and dining room, commodious public spaces, and guest rooms that easily became dorm rooms for the students. The school was perfectly located with easy access to the cultural assets of Washington, D.C., yet far enough removed that the students were surrounded by a pleasant and peaceful environment, which the Cassidys felt was conducive to learning. The Cassidys established National Park Seminary to stress character development and social training as much as academic lessons, and accepted students anywhere from 14 to 21 years old. The couple embellished the NPS property with numerous buildings during their tenure, including the eight fanciful sorority houses, the gymnasium, and several dormitories. After Vesta's death in 1910, John married a former student and gave up running M NPS. Taking the helm in 1916, Dr. James Eli Ament became the school's second president. Ament received degrees from Oskaloosa College in Iowa and Transylvania University in Kentucky. Prior to arriving at Forest Glen, he served as superintendent of two municipal school districts and president of three state normal schools and was highly regarded in the field of education. Like the Cassidys before them, the Ament's both took part in educating the students at National Park Seminary, where they continued with an emphasis on music, languages, drama, and the arts. They also surrounded the students in an environment rich in culture, with paintings, furniture, sculptures, and a large fountain set against the beautiful natural backdrop of the Glen. The immense additions to the campus brought formal neoclassical elements to the East Lake style in and the surrounding buildings through the addition of columns, porticos, and pediments throughout the campus. Dr. Ament constructed the Grand President's House for himself and his wife, Teresa Welsh Ament, and the Neoclassical Music Conservatory, which was named for her. The most significant contribution to the campus at this time was the construction of a Ment Hall with its magnificent ballroom, which was erected in 1927 for a staggering $482,000, plus an additional $10,000 for the monumental Victrola sound system. It is reported that at the time of its construction, a Ment Hall was the tallest building in Montgomery County. Dr. Ament died in 1936 following surgery, and the school was sold the following year. The administration of National Park Seminary next fell to the capable hands of Roy Tasco Davis, the school's third president. Davis had embarked on a political career at age 17, when he briefly served as a congressional page. After returning and working in the Missouri House of Representatives, he was appointed envoy to Costa Rica in 1922 and Panama in 1929. When he and his family returned a decade later, they headed back to Davis's home state of Missouri, where he became an administrator at Stevens College, a prominent private women's school in Columbia. Arriving at NPS in 1937, Davis updated the curriculum to be more relevant in the depressed economy. He felt that women should be able to support themselves if the need arose and emphasized more rigorous academics and vocational training while also continuing the school's existing traditions. NPS 
was renamed National Park College on July 1, 1937. The students were allowed more freedom under Davis's administration. They no longer donned uniforms for classes and were allowed more frequent visits off campus without chaperones and were able to participate in co-ed dances, football games, and other activities with neighboring schools. Unfortunately, however, the new programs and attitudes of the school were short-lived. In 1942, the War Department took possession of the school property for the war emergency to become an annex to the Walter Reed Army Hospital. Davis conscientiously took care of his faculty and staff by finding them placements at other schools and arranging for the Army to hire much of the kitchen and landscaping staff at the new hospital. After the end of World War II, Davis was unsuccessful at reclaiming the school from the federal government, but went on to become a Maryland state senator and an ambassador to Haiti under President Eisenhower. The first two presidents of National Park are memorialized by names given to new roads on the redeveloped residential campus, Cassidy and Ament Streets. All three are buried nearby in Rock Creek Church Cemetery in Washington, D.C., while their legacy lives on in Forest Glen. Thanks for watching. Please visit us at saveourseminary.org to find out about our tour and event schedules and how you can help continue to save our seminary. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram.